The first container of highly radioactive spent nuclear fuel has been successfully transferred to a safer pool at the Fukushima Daiichi facility. The nuclear plant operator says it is the first such procedure involving spent fuel since the 2011 accident. Workers with Tokyo Electric Power Company began moving less dangerous unused fuel rods in the middle of November. The nuclear fuel rods are being removed from the damaged storage pool at the number 4 reactor building. On Saturday, workers transferred a container of 22 highly radioactive spent fuel assemblies from the reactor building to a safer storage pool in a nearby facility. The fuel was then placed into an underwater holding rack. The TEPCO officials say the transfer was completed without incident. They plan to relocate about 1,500 fuel assemblies in the number 4 reactor building by the end of next year. It will be a key step for decommissioning the crippled nuclear power plant. Workers will then start removing fuel assemblies from three other reactor buildings. A group of Japanese academics, including two Nobel Prize winners, have come out against the controversial state secrets bill. The ruling coalition wants the bill to become law before the current diet session ends next week. The academics released a statement saying the bill would give the government a free hand in expanding the range of protected secrets. The group includes Toshihide Masukawa, a Nobel Prize winner in physics, and Hideki Shirakawa, who won the Nobel Prize in chemistry. The bill would let senior government officials define so-called special secrets. They include information about defense, diplomacy, counterintelligence and counterterrorism. Public servants who leak such information would face a maximum prison term of 10 years. The lower house passed the bill on Tuesday. The upper house is now discussing the draft law. The statement criticizes the ruling camp for forcing the bill through the diet despite widespread public opposition. The group says that reminds them of how the pre-war government destroyed freedom of thought and freedom of the press and forced the country into war. Shirakawa says the bill isn't clear about what kind of secrets would be protected and when they would be declassified. He warns that the proposed law could undermine research activities. Shirakawa says academics might think that their work could be classified as state secrets. Environmental officials in California say there's been another highly troubling report about what's going on in the Pacific. The scientists call it the sea star wasting syndrome. That's the technical name, but something is killing the starfish, and they don't know why. They've been dying in record numbers on the West Coast, including parts of Washington State all along the coast down to California. Our report tonight from NBC's Miguel Almaguer. In the waters off Monterey Bay, an urgent expedition is underway. This is the hunt for a killer. It's happened so rapidly that some species are just missing. Marine biologist Pete Ramondi is searching for clues to an epidemic named starfish wasting disease, infecting waters from Alaska to Southern California, causing millions of starfish like this one to fall apart and melt away. Our group is looking to try to map the timing of the onset of the disease and locations of the disease up and down the coast so it will help us point to causes. The die-off has decimated the starfish population in this cove. Two species that used to thrive here have now vanished. Sea stars, commonly known as starfish, are natural predators feeding on mussels and clams that can overpopulate and tip this fragile ecosystem out of balance. Are you worried this could be the canary in the coal mine? Absolutely. We've got a holding tank. Dr. Michael Murray says the disease has even penetrated the filtration system at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So we draw our water in out of Monterey Bay. Whatever it is that it must be in the water is affecting our animals as well. It's happened before. In the 80s and 90s, starfish wasting disease knocked out pockets of these creatures in these very waters. But nothing has ever been seen quite like this. Now scientists are focusing on warmer water, lower oxygen levels, and ocean acidification as possible causes. But nothing is off the table. I mean, I've had probably 100 emails thus far saying, well, what about Fukushima? 
because of radiation. We haven't ruled that out yet, but we're clearly not ruling that in. The mysterious disease has now spread to at least 10 species of starfish, and it's threatening more every day. Miguel Almaguer, NBC News, Monterey, California. People on the Pacific island of Kiribati have heard endless arguments about climate change. They saw negotiators at the latest UN conference go back and forth, then promise to submit targets for cutting greenhouse gas emissions two years from now. But for residents of Kiribati, the time for talking about climate change has already passed. NHK World's Takeo Nakajima explains. Waves break over ocean roads and seawater floods into people's homes. The sea level is rising and the people of Kiribati are under siege. The country of Kiribati, over 30 small islands in the Pacific Ocean, is home to 100,000 people. This is the highest place in this island, around 3 meters above sea level. At such low elevation, Kiribati is on the front line of global warming. The ocean's advance never stops. At high tide, the water now covers the land all around the houses here. I do concern about Kiribati people, but um, I don't really know the answer. Salt water has contaminated this well and residents have lost their drinking water. Farmland is under threat. This field is now useless for planting crops. It's estimated that Kiribati has lost about 10% of its agricultural land over the past decade. Area Mairere lives in a village by the ocean. Residents here have endured repeated flooding and they've had enough. One by one, area's neighbors are leaving. As you can see, the, the remaining of the building here, one family live here, but they have moved out, as you can see. This is the floor of their house. This is another small storeroom they have, but nothing they can do. They have to move out to some other places. This is a long-term computer forecast from the Japan Meteorological Agency and the University of Tokyo. It shows that sea level will rise an average of 20 centimeters around the world by 2035. The sea level around Kiribati is expected to rise more than 20 centimeters. Predictions like that have forced Kiribati's government to take some drastic measures. Officials are planning to buy land in Fiji, 2,000 kilometers away. They've identified a 2,000 hectare plot with an asking price of around $8 million. The plan is to grow food on the land, but the government does not rule out the idea of using the site for relocating Kiribati residents who have lost their homes. We see that uh, the projection for total submersion and total loss of land will become an eventuality for us. So we need to prepare and we need the international community to assist us as we prepare for all eventualities. Kiribati is preparing for the worst case scenario. The tide is rising and these island people know one day leaving their homeland may be the only option left. Takeo Nakajima, NHK World, Tarawa, Kiribati. After Chernobyl, we finally hear All kinds of cancer went up the next year Hard to interpret, says OPCS Can't understand it, well here is a guess Low-level isotopes from the Ukraine Drifted to Wales on the wind and the rain Rainfall is higher in Bangor than Kent Cancer in Wales is up 30% We're breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular DNA And each of beta decay In an occasional, rather mutational way 
Even new labour can see what it means. Radio isotopes alter your genes. Ghosts of dead babies will give them no rest till the dosimetry's been reassessed. Wombling, strombling, banker to Kent, telling the news of the second event. Telling the story of all and two scenes A radio isotopes alter your genes Nuclear establishment, castle of lies Children are dying in front of your eyes Born with no limbs, with two heads or no brain Born to a life of incurable pain Nuclear subsidies victims will pay While you take a pension and tiptoe away Don't reassure us cause we always knew Yours was a story too slick to be true. On the thirtieth day of November year twenty thirteen, Abukuma River, Fukushima City, Fukushima Prefecture, Japan. Just in front of my eyes, Fukushima Prefecture Government Office. The monitor shows 0.98 microsievert per hour. This is a figure in air at my chest high. Fukushima City, population 290,000. 55 or 60 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Radiation pollution map of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident by Professor Yukio Hayakawa of Gunma University. A trench for Rainwater draining from the Watari area of Fukushima City. On the 30th day of November in the year 2013, NHK Broadcasting Station of Koryama City, Fukushima Prefecture, Japan. The monitor shows 0.31 microsievert per hour. This is the figure in air at my chest high. Koryama city, population 330,000. 55 or 60 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Radiation pollution map of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident of by Professor Yukio Hayakawa of Gunma University. Koryama city is hot spot.
はいこれはあの直置きなんですけど、はい、7.4 ですねマイクロシリーズはいここにはちょうどこう集まってるたまたまこう集まってるからですね、はい、7.24 マイクロシーベルトパワーワーです駐車場のくぼ地にたまった砂の上に直置きです The managers who run a private high school in Fukushima say they will soon shut down for good. The problem? Not enough students are expected to come back. More than 100 students were attending Shoei Senior High School in Minam Minami Soma City at the time of the 2011 nuclear accident. Those students had to transfer to different schools after managers temporarily closed it. The managers say it's difficult for them all to return. Because many nearby areas are still designated as no entry zones. The school is only 22 kilometers from the power plant. The situation there hasn't returned to normal yet. It's extremely difficult for us to reopen the school, considering the safety and health of students, teachers, and the staff. This is the first time a school in the prefecture will be closed because of the accident. The managers now plan to demand compensation from the operator of the plant. Operations at the Cori Nuclear Reactor 1 in Busan have been suspended due to a problem suspected in the turbine system. An electrical accident at the Shin Cori Nuclear Power Plant has raised concerns about safety standards there. Three people were injured. South Korea said on Tuesday it was suspending the operations of two nuclear power reactors and extended a shutdown of a third to replace cables that were supplied using fake certificates. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Thursday, November 28th. I'm Luke Clary. Operations at the Cori Nuclear Reactor 1 in Busan have been suspended. Early reports say that there's a problem in the turbine system. Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power Corporation said the operation of Kori Nuclear Reactor 1 came to a halt today at around 1 a.m. An official said it looked like there was an issue with the reactor's turbine system and the company is working to identify the exact cause of the suspension. The 580,000 kilowatt Kori 1, the nation's oldest nuclear reactor, went into operation in 1978. Its design life expired in June 2007, but its reoperation was approved in January 2008 and will be run for 10 more years. During a checkup period this year, the operation of Kori Nuclear Reactor 1 was halted for 176 days. It resumed operation on October 5th, but now it is out of order again after around 50 days. With Kori 1 out, six out of the nation's 23 nuclear reactors are not functioning. The six include Shin Gori 1 and 2 and Shin Walsong 1, which were suspended in the wake of a scandal over the use of unqualified parts. Also, Walsong 1's lifespan expired while Hanbit 4 is undergoing a checkup. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Friday, October 11th. I'm Luke Clary. Three people were injured in an accident at the Shin Gori nuclear power plant, the plant which is still under construction was already under scrutiny for questionable safety standards. Reactor 3 of the Shingori nuclear power plant is set to begin operating next year in August. Yesterday afternoon, an electrical accident occurred in the reactor's refrigerating device, injuring three officials, two from the Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power and one from another company. 
They received burns from sudden sparks while they were examining the power circuit breaker of the refrigerating device. The severity of the burns ranges from first to third degrees. The injured workers were rushed to a nearby hospital to undergo medical treatment and are reported to be in stable condition. But the executives of the nuclear power plant didn't report the accident to police, raising suspicions of their attempts to conceal it. Reactor 3 made headlines before for using components supplied by a company that had forged safety evaluation papers. A recent parliamentary inspection also revealed that nearly half of the key components used in the reactor regarding its safety were inspected by the supplying companies and not by experts. The government is pushing for the construction of high-voltage power transmission towers in Miryang, despite the residents' opposition, since it plans to start the operation of Reactor 3 next year. With such ongoing issues, concerns and distrust over the reactor's safety continue to escalate as next year approaches. South Korea said on Tuesday it was suspending the operations of two nuclear power reactors and extended a shutdown of a third to replace cables that were supplied using fake certificates. After analyzing safety, we found out the control cables didn't show proper performance under high temperature and pressure, which accidents such as refrigerant loss can occur. So we decided to suspend the operations of Shinkori 2 and Shin Walson 1 reactors. South Korea previously halted the operations of some 23 reactors last November after a scandal emerged over parts being supplied using fake documents. The Asian country is heavily dependent on oil, gas and coal imports but usually gets a third of its electricity from nuclear power generation. The reactors, which each have a capacity of 1,000 megawatts, would remain closed for about four months, the government said. The government warned there could be, quote, unprecedented electricity shortages and rolling blackouts this summer due to the nuclear shutdowns. We expect unprecedented supply shortage this summer as we have to meet power demand while three reactors are halted. Last year, South Korea was forced to take power-saving measures to avoid blackouts after it closed two reactors to replace parts, also supplied with fake documents, and extended the shutdown of another reactor where microscopic cracks were found. Japanese investigators have arrested three people on suspicion of exporting tons of fish to North Korea illegally. The Japanese government has banned all exports to North Korea since June 2009 after the country carried out a nuclear test. Tokyo police and the Japan Coast Guard say Kinuyo Matsumoto and two others exported more than 400 tons of frozen cod without government approval. The shipment was from the port of Hachinohe in northern Japan in August 2011. Matsumoto is an executive at a Tokyo-based trading firm. The suspects reportedly told customs officials that a cargo ship carrying the cod was bound for a port in China's Shandong province, but there's no record of the ship arriving at that destination. Japan's agriculture ministry is to make the largest cut in its rice production target in a decade. A panel of experts and farmers advising the ministry approved the target at a meeting on Thursday. The target for next year is set at 7.65 million tons, down 260,000 tons from this year. The ministry made the cut for a fifth year in a row. Rice consumption is falling due to rising prices. A relatively good yield in the crop this year is raising the prospects of a surplus in rice stockpiles next year. The government has uh, set a total production target and quotas for rice producers. That system is set to be abolished in about five years. Government officials will launch Japan's version of the U.S. National Security Council as early as next week. The officials say the council will help Japan deal with growing diplomatic and security issues. NHK World's Kengo Okamoto explains. The Diet approved the bill to set up the council at Wednesday's plenary session. The Prime Minister will head a four-minister panel the core decision-making entity in the new body. The ministers will gather every two weeks. The council's new administrative office will bring together 60 officials from the foreign, defense, and other ministries and agencies. 
Its secretariat will gather information from all the government bureaucracies and report to the four minister panel. The panel will be able to demand information in return. The NSC will draw up the country's mid to long term foreign and security policies. The Prime Minister and his panel will discuss the reorganization of U.S. forces in Japan, relations with China and North Korea's nuclear and missile programs, and other issues. The Japanese NSC is essential to strengthen the functions of the Prime Minister's office as a unified command post. We want to establish the organization as early as possible to protect our national security. Currently, the Prime Minister discusses key national defense issues with eight cabinet members at the Security Council, but those are short crisis management meetings. Also, ministers and agencies report information individually to the Prime Minister or the Chief Cabinet Secretary. Government officials want to make this system more efficient. An expert who helped set up the NSC says the country needs an institution to coordinate policies and devise a unified strategy. The officials can better prepare different options for various occasions by setting up the NSC. This means they can act quickly in case of emergencies, resulting in less damage. The government officials hope to launch the council by December 4th. Kengo Kamoto, NHK World. A high court in Japan has ruled July's upper house election invalid due to the wide disparity in the weight of votes among constituencies. It's the first time a court has annulled the results of an upper house election. Part of the upper house is elected by constituencies from each of Japan's 47 prefectures. The number of lawmakers elected by each prefecture is based on the size of the voter population. But the ratio is not proportional, meaning heavily populated prefectures are underrepresented. Two groups of lawyers have filed lawsuits at high courts across Japan to seek an annulment of the election. They are pursuing individual claims against the electoral committees of each prefecture. The lawyers claim that the disparity ratio between the least represented district and the most is high as 4.77. They say this violates the people's right to equality as guaranteed by the Constitution. The Okayama branch of the Hiroshima High Court ruled that this disparity is unconstitutional, thereby invalidating the election results in Okayama Prefecture. Presiding Judge Noriyoshi Katano blamed the Diet for not acting enough on a Supreme Court ruling handed down four years ago that urged electoral reform. We think the ruling is wonderful. It states clearly that the value of each vote should be the same. The ruling is very severe. Thursday's ruling can be appealed by the Okayama Prefecture Election Committee, but if the ruling is finalized, the constituency's sole lawmaker will lose his seat, requiring another election. The disparity in the value of votes in last year's lower house election is also an issue. The Supreme Court ruled last week that the disparity amounted to a state of unconstitutionality, but the court stopped short of saying it violated the Constitution. All high courts across Japan are expected to hand down judgments by late next month on the upper house election lawsuits.